as you know, misrepresenting what was said. This is exactly what was said. And the claimant also goes on to say that the key point is that Quraysh, like all, and you'll see why it's important in a minute, like all paganisms, ascribe to their gods power and the right to be worshipped. Their levels to power and worship. And that Quraysh, therefore, believed that their gods were semi-independent, and other than the one supreme god. So there's the supreme god, who they call the creator god. And all of the other gods also create, they have the ability to harm, they have the ability to benefit, and they act independently of Allah. Tell you, but let's just make sure we get the claim down. So the claim, the claim is that the Quraysh believed in a creator god. That creator god is, what's his name? Allah. Allah tell you. But that they also believed that the other gods that they worshipped had the ability to create, they were capable of harming, capable of benefiting, and that they acted independently of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or semi-independently of Allah. But that Allah azza they viewed him as being aloof, and therefore these gods were closer to them, and that is why they worshipped them. The claim is that Muhammad ibn Abdul rahimahullah, did not understand this. He did not understand the shirk of Quraysh. And therefore, the extreme Sufis of his time, the Rafila and others, he said that they were worse than the Kufar of Quraysh. And that's because he didn't understand the shirk of the Kufar of Quraysh. We clear on that? Because if he understood their shirk, then there's no way to say that these people, the, for example, the ones that are venerating their saints and invoking their, the deceased, okay, going to the graves and worshipping at the shrines, Okay, if he understood the shirk of Quraysh, he wouldn't have said that they, those people were, were worse than Quraysh. Now, because he said that they were worse than Quraysh, then that leads to, leads to point number two, which is that that naturally creates a level of fanaticism and divisiveness. Because if those people are worse than the people that the Prophet Sallallahu fought, then naturally, then what should I be doing? I should be fighting them. And that led to Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Allah, killing tens of thousands of people. This is, in the, this is the claim. And thirdly, that nobody, as we'll get to inshallah, and this is the other claim that we'll deal with, that nobody before Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab called certain acts shirk. That he exclusively was the one who called certain acts shirk, like al-istighatha bil amwat, which is to call upon the dead for aid, seeking aid from them. Okay? Now, again, we are not, inshallah, along the way we're going to learn a little bit more about the shirk that comes in the Quran. And what the scholars of tafsir have said about that, and what the people before Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab have said about that. Because the reality is, is that Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab died 229 years ago on the solar calendar, right? And a little bit more than that, 36, uh, 236 years ago, right? On the Egypt calendar. Which means that if you believe that same way, then you are simply a follower of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab and your deen is Muqtada. I mean, that is what's being said. That he was the one that innovated this. This was his understanding, not the scholars before. I'm not here to try to convince anybody to agree with any opinion. The issue here is that the claim that Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah ta'ala, was the first one to say these things is simply a factual error. The scholars before him have said the same thing. Are there other scholars historically who have argued against certain opinions? Absolutely. And that's why the, the, the whole back and forth in the discourse, that's a totally different, that's a totally different issue. The issue here is, is Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, is this claim correct? That he was the first to say that the shirk of Quraysh was primarily almost exclusively in Uluhiyyah, okay, that they didn't do shirk in Rububiyyah, or that they akarru the Rububiyyah, that they affirmed the Rububiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawheed of Rububiyyah. Like, and also that what? That all of the people, and before, understood that the shirk of Quraysh, and other than Quraysh, because this is amongst the systems of pagans throughout humanity, that they all believed that their aliha, that their gods could benefit and harm and create independently of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are, are we clear on the claim? As a matter of fact, I'm not just going to ask you, are we clear? Bring back to me what the claim is. Yeah. 